Not long ago, I sent you a survey. And the survey was, what question, if you had a chance to ask Bo, would you like to ask? Guess what? We got this huge response. And guess what the most frequently asked question that, that the majority of the people asked? It had to do with the subject of stage fright. And I was a little bit shocked by that. I was a little bit like, dang, really? That many people want to know about stage fright? Because um, I have huge stage fright. And it's such a part of my life now that I never really discuss it because it's, uh, you know, it's just like uh, uh, everyday occurrence because one day, usually I'm on stage or I'm in front of a camera or I'm training people or coaching people and I always have stage fright or my one of my kids has a dance recital or one of my kids has a, has a, a basketball game and I get nervous. I get worried about it. But it's such a part of who I am now. It's, I've been, I'm resolved to the fact that I'm never getting over it. All right. And that's the number one lesson here today is you with stage fright. Uh, the good news is this. You're never getting over it. Now that may be the bad news too, right? The good news is I just want you to resolve yourself to the fact that you are never going to get over it. And congratulations for that. The greatest performers, the greatest performers I ever played with, whether it's uh, in the NFL, you know, I played with, I think I played with eight uh, Hall of Fame players. I don't know anybody else who played with that many Hall of Fame players. It's a lot uh, for one career. Uh, these guys, who you'd know their names, they are nervous before a big game. They're nervous before any game. They're anxious. They're nervous. Some of them throw up. Some of them go to the bathroom a hundred times, me included. It's a state of readiness. It's nature's way of telling you that you are prepared to do something great. You're about to uh, endeavor on something that you're supposed to do. I also had a, a, a great performance coach named Roy London, and he was my first acting coach, uh, amazing guy. Um, and he used to say, uh, because my hands would shake when I performed, when I get on, on stage, my hands would shake like crazy. And he loved that they did that. He said, I said, he goes, why do your hands shake? And I go, because I'm really nervous and I want to do good. And he goes, do you know that if you replace the word nervous, because I think you're using the wrong term, you're saying stage fright, you're saying the word nervous when I think the actual emotion that you're feeling is love. So replace the word nervous or stage fright with the word love because it is true. That's really what I was feeling. I wanted to do well. I wanted to perform. I wanted to impact people. No different than you. That's called love. That's what you're feeling. You want to do well. So most people, most especially I, I, I see this in speaking coaches all the time and acting coaches do this too. Oh, um, you got to get over that stage fright. And that's just bad coaching. That's horrible coaching because you're not getting over it for a lifetime. I don't know anyone who's been on stage as much as I am, have, uh, whether it's a football field or a, or a, you know, a theater or a, or a platform stage somewhere. Ah, I don't ever get over it. Before I shot, started shooting this video with you, I'm anxious, I'm nervous. I add some movement to my warm up. I get warmed up, I get my body ready. I get some movement in to kind of let that love and let that, uh, what you would call stage fright, kind of uh, embed into my molecules and then I, I just go. Another tip, someone once taught me this, a guy named Larry Moss, who's a great, great uh, acting coach and director. He said this, your fear um, must be subservient to the message you're delivering. So he said, I don't care how you feel necessarily. You might feel uh, self-doubt. You might feel anxious. You might feel nervous in front of an audience. And he said, your intent to make impact and deliver the goods on that audience must supersede the way you feel. Think about that. So the next time you take the stage, the first thing you do, your foot hits the stage, you look out into the audience, you 
find that one person. You connect to them. You see what they need and then you deliver the goods. When you're that intentional, you don't have time to be nervous. You don't have time to think about what's going on with you. You're too busy over there. Another great example, uh, quarterbacks. All of you have seen quarterbacks play in the NFL. These guys are, have to stay very calm in the most trying situations. Like it may be snowing, the coach is freaking out, the crowd is booing them, the defense is trying to kill them. They might have a broken arm or finger or a black eye. See how calm they remain. The next time you watch a game, these guys just stay, stay calm. It's not that they're not nervous. It's not that they don't feel these emotions inside. It's that they have a big job at hand. They have to deliver the goods. So the delivery of the goods supersedes the way they feel. Apply this the next time you perform. I want to say one more thing about stage fright. It is the greatest rocket fuel that you have. Don't try to get rid of it. Don't try to get around it. And don't try to pretend you don't have it. Use it. Take it on the stage with you. If your hands shake, so be it. If you sweat, I love a human being that sweats. Bring that rocket fuel, which you call stage fright, onto the stage with you. Don't try to get out there without it. That you, you'd be starting from a false premise to begin with if you're disregarding the emotion and the feelings and the love that you're already feeling. Don't, don't push it aside and leave it off the stage. Bring it out there with you. I promise you, if you do that, people will have the most difficult time looking away from you. Imagine what that would be like for you. If your audience can't look away from you because you're a real human being with real nerves and real emotions right in front of them, instead of starting from a false premise and going out there going, hey, I'm very cool and comfortable out here, you're going to become very predictable if you're like that and no one's going to pay attention to you. Okay? Bring that jet fuel with you. You're so lucky that you have stage fright. Use it. See you next time.